Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Let's Play Pokemon Scarlet. Now, this is episode six of the series, and here we will be taking down one of the Team Star hideouts. Um, there's a lot of dialogue in this episode. A lot of dialogue, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this is like the first point watching the game where I've actually been infuriated while I was playing it because like there's too much to explain here it's like I'm a student but I also look like the main professor at the academy that you were just at so it's like well yeah obviously it's the professor and you're not a friend we're not pals man we're not pals I just met you supposedly and you're trying to fake open soda pop there but you're trying to fake being a different person than you are like this whole thing goes on for so long where they're explaining the plan but the plan is pretty much like let's go in defeat all the pokemon we come across and then after we do that beat the boss of this area which is very self-explanatory it's not it doesn't need like this much dialogue to get that point across this is I will say, out of all the episodes I put out there, this is the one that I am most aggravated with. Like, it just took so long. That and the, the Modern Warfare 2 episode, just because the graphics were so bad. That's like the... These are the two. Like, this one, it's just... There's so much reading. Like, we need to take their role somehow? And it's like, that's right. And it's like, how's anybody surprised by any of this? So there's their base. It stopped me in front of it, because it's like, oh, now we need to dump a bunch of dialogue on top of this to really make the game ten times longer than it needs to be. But it's like, you know, we understand this. We get it. And this person on the phone here is pretty much saying, like, I, it, we'll see here. I'll explain it to you in a minute because it, it gets ridiculous. Like, the IQ level that they think I have, that this is going to be a huge shock later, is stunning. But the rest of the team crumbles with no one left to lead them. It's all plan. Pretty much, yeah, like, this is, like, the leader of their group and... Everybody else is going to be hurting, but still hanging on if we defeat this first member here. That's pretty much all the, the dialogue we needed here. But Average Joe is going to be holding down the fort and committing to his role. He looks a lot better without a hat and shorts, I'll give him that. This guy's still wearing shorts, he's punk. I have a history with Team Star. Which makes me think that like they're secretly a member in some regard. But, like I said, we'll get to that a little bit later. Because it becomes, like, if you have an IQ higher than that of a squirrel, you should be able to figure out the correlation here. <laughs> like, it's not, it's not brain science that we're talking about. But I'm like, hey, yeah, like, you look like my professor. He's like, if anyone asks, remember this. I'm Clive, a normal academy student, just like you. Nothing more, nothing less. It's like, obviously, you're the professor. Man, what are you doing? So, that is that. Let's go get this collectible item here. And let's go into battle. In retrospect, I should have taken my Dolphan out of position one. Because he's not going to be doing any good here, but... I forget what we actually call them during the Let's Play. Oh, a nice black loading screen. That's great. Team Star, yeah, we're gonna, I don't know. We can't run around on our turf. They're gonna send us packing. Are you that average Joe kid? So is she essentially, the person sending the message, sent out a message to all of them that like, I'm coming to beat their ass, which is like, puts us on their hit list. So not the most inconspicuous way of handling this. But, I don't know. I guess I'll battle you. I highly doubt you have anything worthwhile. 
So let's go for it. Here we are. Team Star. Badoo! I, I don't particularly like Team Star. Some Murkrow. Send out Mud. Yeah, I shouldn't have sent him out. He's not going to be able to do a lot here. This is not going to be effective at all. In fact, I don't even think it hits. Yep. So we might as well just switch out into our sheep money. Let's go sheep money. Every time I do that, I wave my fingers in the air. Like the surfer right on, bro. That's what I do. For sheep money. So I know what sheep money's about. He's all about being a sheep and getting that money. We cause paralysis to the Murkrow there. Murkrow. Let's do a Thundershock. That, if it doesn't one hit KO, it's going to be really close. Yeah, it's really close. So now we just need to hit it with whatever. Uh, takedown will be fine. It's going to cause a little bit of recoil damage, but... I don't feel like wasting our PP on Thundershock in case we don't... In case we need it later. That's cool. That's a cool recoil thing. There we go. My main thing there was keeping Mud alive because Mud needs some EXP to turn into a doll fan eventually. And um, until we find a Rhyhorn, I'm probably not going to get rid of him. Like, it's... He's a solid teammate for the time being. I mean, he doesn't... He's really, like, ground-specific, whereas Rhyhorn has, like, a lot of variability in his character, but... That's for a later point in time. And here we go. He's like, oh, I actually gotta do something. Let me give the squad a heads up that you're coming. It's like, okay. Best of luck. And he does his star salute. And then, of course, I get a call on the phone again explaining how this is gonna work. Like, just let me figure it out, game. Please. Please. Like, I'm genuinely disappointed in the game at this point in time. Like, it's aggravating that we have to walk through this 900 times because the game doesn't think I'm competent enough to figure this out. Like, it's... Thank God we have soda pops. Honestly. This is, like, such a headache. And whatever, they're like, oh, <laughs> we think the other people wear you down. I'm like, well, I have enough potions and items and stuff like that but it turns out we don't even need it we don't need any of that stuff we need it right now like if i go into here and i heal up my mud all the way up and then i'm gonna give a potion to good old sheep money there that's good enough then i just need to go and ring the spell I'm going to save real quick, just in case I lose. Because I'm angry with the game, but I'm not cocky. So it's the first three Pokemon in your party. I have to remember that for the future. Wasn't really paying attention, of course. Average Joe 101. They call it a Star Barrage. So what happens is you need to send out your Pokemon to defeat, like, a series of Pokemon. And once you beat them, you move on to the next series of Pokemon. You just continue through it. Like, it's quicker than a Pokemon battle, but it, it gets you to battle a whole ton of Pokemon. If you win, you win. If you lose, you lose, I'm assuming. And then based off of that, you get to proceed to the boss as long as you make that happen. So here we go, we're getting ready to do it. And that's pretty much what we do. We just throw our Pokemon... Sorry for the silence there, Jesus. It's... And the puppy sniffles. Puppy sneeze. The most powerful move. <laughs> I honestly, I have trouble, like, finding these Pokemon. Like, that's the hardest part of this. 
But you just send their Pokemon out there, and you pretty much just annihilate them. I don't, <laughs> I don't know any other way of putting it. I'm glad that like none of these Pokemon are super effective against mine, because they do do a little bit of damage like they would in a battle, but not nearly as much. I just wish we would get EXP from this. That's kind of annoying. But I feel like none of my Pokemon are getting EXP, like at all. That and I have like one strong Pokemon and two mediocre Pokemon handling this. I'm surprised they're getting through it as well as they are. But I guess we are a little bit over leveled. But also we're gonna see in a minute that I, I truly don't believe we are. Like I truly believe this is where the game wants us to be. Because the next battle coming up is pretty hard. Now we need to kill four more Pokemon. And I'm sure there's a whole bunch of secret stuff here we could find. But I just kind of want to get through this. It's more annoying than it is anything else. It, it's harder to find the Pokemon than it is to take them out. Which is a problem. There we go. Tello gets the last kill. Good job, Tello. He's way above our level. We gotta get the boss. Okay. I'm not all that above your level. Especially we'll see in this fight. I'm not even close. So here comes the boss. Comes out riding out on this thing. He's like, yo, I'm mad. DJ, boss of Team Stars Dark Crew. It's just a dark type, which we're not really, like, set up to kill. Loading screen, because of course there's a loading screen. The game can't handle it. Its own mechanism. Yeah, it's me. DJ Vice. He'll give me a thing on Crash and Burn. That's fine. This whole ordeal to me is very... I I don't I don't find this as fun as I find Team Rocket Battles, which is sad because Team Rocket Battles aren't that exciting. They, they just bleed out the game a little bit more. So he's a dark type. But we need to use all of our players efficiently here. Because he could have some strong Pokemon. It looks like they're a little bit more leveled than mine. Okay, bringing the house down. This guy is... His Metal Claw, it's going to be pretty effective. Okay. Bulldoze. Super effective. But its attack rises sharply for whatever reason. Metal Claw again, which is probably going to kill me. Yep. Terrific. So I looked at it and just thought fire. I didn't think dark type, so I send out Tello. Because he looks like a fire type Pokemon. And I try to use Water Gun. It does little to nothing. And it uses Aerial Ace, which is devastating for Tello. But Tello might as well get one more Water Gun in. Or maybe a headbutt. Yeah, it's something to do damage. It's not going to do well. It flinched. It couldn't move. That's good. I try water gun again. Maybe we can knock it out. We can't. Which means we're likely going to die here. Yep. But we still got three Pokemon. Or four Pokemon left here. I mean, Cotton Swab can't really help that much. It, it can help out here and just get some EXP in general, but... That's if it hits first, which I believe it will. Like, it has some pretty good speed. Yep. Cotton Swab hits first. That Pokemon faints, which is nice. Get everybody a little bit of EXP. And then it sends out... He sends out pretty much... I, I don't know if it's, like, the Pokemon on the front of this thing, or if it's, like, the entirety of this ship. I think it's the entirety of this ship, but this is, like, bogus. Is metal sound. I avoid the attack. 
I used disarming voice. Let's see how much this does. And it's super effective and it doesn't do jack diddly. Now given I'm not a fairy type, so I'm not getting the same attack bonus or anything like that. But this could be really scary to go up against. Like I'm sincerely worried about how we're gonna be able to beat this damn thing. It uses that, which puts me to sleep. That's great, so we get a trolley boss right out the gate. Might as well just go for an attack. It's probably gonna hit us again. Yep, we're dead. So now we're in trouble. Now on the bright side, our three Pokemon left are our strongest Pokemon. Let's open another soda pop there. I'm gonna send out Conehead so we can do whatever damage it can. Use this metal sound to increase my special defense. <laughs> but I used a kiss move there. And then I die from a critical hit. So the kiss move is nice because it gave me health points back but at this point I'm really scared right his Pokemon's still in the green my Pokemon I have two of them left they are our strongest Pokemon given but his team could devastate my team here so I think the right move is to go Thunder Wave it does that hopefully it doesn't put me to sleep it does. Holy fuck. Oh, why does it put... That's such a stupid ass move. That it puts you to sleep, too. So here, I think now is the time that we should go into the bag. And revive Conehead. Because I think Conehead got knocked out by luck. Hopefully we could tank something. Yep, we can. So now let's go back into the bag. Let's do a max potion. Or a super potion, maybe. Here on sheep. Sheep needs to stay alive. If we're going to heal up other party members. Like, this is like a real strategic play here. Because we could legitimately lose here. Like, we're in a good position to lose. But I think it's just going to continuously go with Snarl now. So I think Thunder Wave... Hoping that it wakes up is the best move. And it woke up. We hit it with Thunder Wave. It does nothing. So essentially, I just screwed Sheep. <laughs> is what happened. Let's give a max potion to Sheep. And now that we're awake, it's going to use the super hard hitting move that has the ability to put us to sleep. No, it uses Snarl again, but it'll realize that next turn, I'm sure. And it keeps decreasing my special attack. So this is, like, a really effective way to kill a team. Luckily, that one didn't put us down and out. But Takeout didn't do much either. We can give a Super Potion to Sheep, but we're running low on items here. Like, we're really cheesing our way through this. Use a snarl. That's okay. I mean, it does, like, about half. I don't know, like... Once again, like, the game is really, like... Building up for you to be, like, a new player. But if you were a new player, like... This would devastate your team. Like, there's no way... That's gonna kill us. Okay. Okay. So I think our best bet of action here, because we have Conehead half healed up, I think we should use Kong. Because if we need to, we can really help Kong out. But what she should do is traumatize Kong and use Incinerate. It's not going to be super effective, but it's going to be effective and the traumatization of Kong, which is what I'm calling it, yes should help us out in the long run. 
it'll give us a lot of extra dealing damage here. Which I think is what the game wanted us to do from the start, but I kind of wanted to win fair and square before it screwed us with coming at us with a uh, fucking school bus as an opponent. So that did a good chunk of damage. We should be able to do a lot of damage here. And we should be able to heal as well and take care of business. My special attack falls, that's fine. I mean, it's not great, but let's see how far this takes it down. It's into red health. So I'm tempted to go with one more. We would need to heal it after this. Six life points isn't a lot, but I had a feeling we would survive. Incinerate. And that does it. And we beat our first team star leader here. It is bullshit to go up against a magic school bus. As an opponent, though. Like, that's a load of crap. And then there's a, a black loading screen. But then he's like, oh, I guess I lost. Eh, whatever. Uh, we're in the Pokemon universe, bro. It's like about a year and a half ago. It's like, here I am. Yeah. Definitely not yanking off to what I'm watching here. <laughs> I mean, just the jerky motion that they give the character. But it's like, new plans, and it's like, Operation Star, the new code of conduct for the team. You know, tons of new members have joined up recently. Well, we figure some team rules, like a code, so we're on the same page. It's like, who's going to make the code? It's like, no thanks, that's too much pressure. I mean, yeah, I'm president of the student council, but everyone knows, everyone ended up hating me. Pretty much. I don't know. This storyline sucks. This is really bad. Yeah, it's it's terrible. Honestly. Without you, Team Star wouldn't work. Well, we just beat him. So it should apparently just fall to crumbles. Like, ashes should be left in what we did. It's like, I'll write up the darn code. I'll do it, I guess. It's like, I did the best I could. I wrote up the code myself. There's no going back on it now. My days are boss are over, so here, take this badge. Okay. I don't know why we're fist bumping him. Or shaking his hand. He's an enemy. He gave me a TM. Which is fair. You should get a TM in these situations. I understand. So this is how the party ends. Let's talk about the Pokemon of yours. You're carrying pretty strong. Yeah, I, I learned it at the academy, I guess. I don't know. They didn't teach me shit. So yeah, I'm enjoying the academy, I guess. I don't know. Wasn't expecting... Yeah. <laughs> You get Quackle to design that for you. That's a good one. That's a good one. But tell me what's up. Thanks, I'll get straight to it. it seems like all you Team Star are headed for expulsion if you... Yeah, so why don't you break up the team and start attending class in the academy again? It's like, that's what you want to know, buddy? We're waiting on a pal. Though we don't know if they're coming back. A pal... A close friend of yours, are they? They're the strongest. Look how the top champion is, pretty much. We call him the big boss. Where's your big boss now? Wouldn't we like to know? Left town about a year and a half ago. I thought it was Team Star going again. They would come back. But teachers are giving them shit, pretty much. So I wonder, I wonder who this big boss is. Oh, what a mystery. Let's see. Right after this, right following this, right? It gave us the suspicion of the big boss. Hmm, hmm, who could the big boss be? This is interesting. This is introspective. This is crazy and riveting. Who could the boss be? 
What information could we get that could lead us to the big boss? Oh, we get a fucking phone call right away. And it's probably the big boss. Probably the big boss that's going to come out at the end of the game and be like, Oh, I was the big boss and I disbanded them only so I could gain more power for myself. This is like such a load of shit. <laughs> I don't want to be this critical of the game, but be a game. Don't be like dumb. That's what you're being. And I really hope it's proving me wrong and that's not how it turns out. But it's 100% reading that way that it's going to turn out to be a big load of turd. A crap sandwich, if you will. And a crap sandwich is a crap sandwich. Regardless, if you put two pieces of bread down, a turd, if you put lettuce, tomato, onion, mayonnaise, um, even bacon, you put bacon on there, it's still a turd sandwich. You can't wrap up a turd sandwich and make it look nice. You need to actually do the work to make your game look good. And that's where this game is struggling right now. I like the gym battles. I like the legendary Pokemon or the whatever, the giant Pokemon that we had a battle last episode. I like all that stuff. Keep that stuff. The traumatizing stuff of the Pokemon, I can deal with. I can live with it. This, this I cannot. This sucks. Do better, Nintendo. I truly mean this. Like, this is really bad. All of it. It's terrible. <laughs> I mean, I'm laughing at it, but I'm laughing at, like, how creatively stuck the game feels. Like, it's, it's horrible. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, if you did like this episode, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. It is free and greatly motivates myself to make videos just like this in the future. I know I'm leaving on a pretty sour note on this episode, but honestly, the backup developers were in charge of this game and it's very clear. That's all I could say. But until the next one, we will all see you later.